Yeah, welcome to news today. Now, President John Mahama has re-echoed the responsibilities of metropolitan, municipal and district executives and the need to achieve concrete results. He was speaking at the second conference of MMDCEs at the Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration meant to take stock of achievement at the local level so far. Development. As part of government's effort to improve the performance of MMDAs to enable them to deliver on their mandate, we have introduced the Functional Organizational Assessment, FWAT. So districts earn rewards with the district development facility as part of a performance-based grant system. I wish to stress that while the total number of districts who qualify are increasing each time, there are still a few of the districts who are not, which are not living up to expectation. So I've directed the Minister of Local Government and Rural Development and the Head of the Local Government Service to review the assessment so that staff whose actions and inactions deny the district assemblies of these valuable resources could be sanctioned. You are enjoined in your personal conduct to exhibit modesty and humility. You are enjoined to exercise respect for traditional authority and the people uh, that you lead. You must also show initiative and innovation in your work. These are qualities that we expect from all of you. In conclusion, government is convinced that if all players do what is expected of them and with the provision of the needed investments, policies, institutional and implementation frameworks, we can succeed to fully serve our people. Bamboo Bicycle Event is concluding arrangements to win of Metropolitan, Municipal and District Assemblies from Central Government Fund. And although this might mean imposition of more taxes by the MMDA's economic advisor to the President, Dr. Nimoy Thompson, says transparency and efficient utilization of the money will make citizens more willing to pay. He was speaking on behalf of President John Mahama at a conference to highlight the need for internally generated funds by MMDAs here in Accra. Give to you here a small. MMDAs represent government at the grassroots, a position which makes them responsible for basic life necessities of the citizenry. With government funds under pressure, the National Consultative Conference on IGF is part of a comprehensive effort by government to raise awareness that much more money can be made at the local governance level. The conference organized by the Finance Ministry was to also discuss policy and capacity issues that the local authorities might have and take their input for policy decisions in a bid to foster ownership of those policies. Finance Minister Seth Tewe said in 2012, all 216 MMDAs made 138 million CDs, an amount which he said needed to be doubled because the potential to do so exists. It is a pity that our MMDAs are not able to collect anything close to a billion Ghana cities, which I believe is feasible with proper, by putting the proper structures. There was a time when all fees that were collected by ministries, departments and agencies, excluding the MMDAs, were paid directly into the consolidated fund. We also launched a major initiative for MDAs to retain a percentage of these fees. And these are also termed internally generated funds. As we speak, the formula for the allocation is under review and will constitute a major policy initiative in the 2015 budget. Local Government and Rural Development Minister Akwesi Oponfosu observed that his outfit has already started laying down structures to deal with current systemic failures as government pursues financial autonomy for the MMDAs. There are instances where some MMDAs initiate outsourcing of IGF without proper contract agreements. Boundary disputes have also contributed to the non-realization of IGF in MMDAs. The Functional Organizational Assessment Tool is one such intervention which has an indicator focusing on IGF. The development of guidelines for the fixing of race, the street naming and property addressing system when completed would also enhance revenue mobilization. Additionally, the Ministry of Finance in collaboration 
with the Ministry of Local Government have developed a set of citizens' public financial management templates to promote accountability and transparency. Development partner representatives from Canada, America and Germany were resolute of both technical and financial support for a rigorous decentralization drive. Speaking for President John Mahama, Dr. Nimoy Thompson said it is about time the local authorities employed innovative ways using local ingenuity to drive local development. Indeed, assemblies must have their own money which they control and not have to wait for transfers from the central government or development party. Composite budgeting, which the finance minister referred to earlier, has been rolled out in all the districts. The draft intergovernmental fiscal framework, IGFF, and its actions have been completed and work on the public financial management PFM cycle has been undertaken also. There could be better functioning of substructures because there will be money generated from local revenue sources to pay the staff and workers at the local level. The links between IGF and improved infrastructure become clearer. Citizens will value their local authorities more and therefore participate in governance more willingly. The conference on internally generated funds as for local authorities, which have been ongoing, comes in the midst of central government budget constraint, government's push for deeper decentralization, and general economic challenges facing the country. Kiftian Rapia, Joy News, Conference Center, Accra. Eric Odura says, Dean of Students, Institute of Local Dean of Studies, Institute of Local Government, and he joined me over the telephone. Hello, Eric. Hi. Uh, good afternoon and thank you very much for joining us here on News Today. Uh, Eric, uh, the idea is to win MMDCEs of the uh, general government's budgets. How can this be done? How can we achieve that? Thank you very much and then good afternoon to your listeners and the viewers. I, I think uh, this can be achieved if we allow the MMDCEs to be on their own if we en uh, encourage them to develop innovative strategies to step up their revenue mobilization. Um, the analysis indicates that there are certain local governments in Ghana here that generate even more than what the central government gives to them. So what it then means is that if with a little bit of re-engineering in the revenue mobilization processes, they will be able to increase their IGFB. And once they increase it, they would no more need the common fund. The common fund would then be made available for rural district assemblies who cannot mobilize enough revenue as the urban district. So in my view is that this can be done, but we need innovative approaches, which will require a short, medium to long term strategy to get potential local government win of central government support. Right, and, and and that also will bring to mind when the local government, when, when the MMDCEs are given the ability to collect their own taxes, use their own money, then we would then ask the question, how can we make sure that these monies are used for the right purposes? Yes, thank you very much. That is why the composite budget has been developed. And then also, that is the main purpose for the National IGF conference, which was held yesterday. The IGF conference is to develop a standardized guideline that would guide the local government in their mobilization and their effective utilization of the resource to promote development. Previously, certain local governments have treated the internally generated fund as an own generated fund, so they can use this any way, anyhow. But now, if the guidelines are developed, it will guide them into tunneling these IGF into development areas that will eventually promote development. So that is the main purpose for the conference, that we develop a generic standardized IGF guideline that will guide all local governments to mobilize and then also ensure that this IGF mobilized goes into development. Right. Uh, uh, and so how do we measure uh, an MMDC is that is ready to take care of itself as against those you have described as the rural uh, district assemblies? We, we measure it by the, uh, the number, the level of IGF they are able to mobilize and then the revenue mobilization base. At the moment, 
it is it is very clear that most metropolitan assemblies in Ghana here are able to mobilize enough IGF as against certain district assemblies because of their revenue base. Let me give you instances. Uh, a metropolitan assembly like Accra Metropolitan Assembly have more revenue mobilization base than a district assembly or let's say a municipal assembly in a certain village. You understand it? So if you compare metropolitan assembly like AMA and then metropolitan assembly like TMA, these two assemblies should be able to mobilize enough to be on their own and then win themselves off the common fund so that that common fund will be made available to other needy district assemblies. Mm, very well. Then it, it also brings to mind the position of a district or a municipal or metropolitan chief executive shouldn't shouldn't be occupied by just a, a anybody. It will tie in uh, whether or not this person should be appointed by uh, the presidency, or we, we should we should go through a process where this person can actually do the job. I mean, I'm I'm saying this with regards to some examples we have seen in the course of the year. Yes, uh, my sister. You see, when we talk about assemblies being on their own. In terms of mobilizing revenue and using it, we are going into an era where the assemblies are to be managed like business entities. Now, if you need local government to be managed like business entities, then you need professional people who are chief executives to manage these assemblies. So if we think the appointment will do the trick, then we should go along those lines. Election, in my view, does not necessarily produce the best city manager if we want an assembly to be managed like a business we should go the way of ensuring that we open it up for competition we prescribe the professional qualifications required of a district chief executive those who think they qualify must apply for it they should go through the process if the people who have to elect them they will elect them but the election should be concentrated on those who are highly qualified to manage a district as a business if not winning local governments of the government subvention will be extremely difficult. Because once you win them off, you need the kind of leadership that will bring to bear innovative strategies to help them to be on their own by mobilizing enough revenue and using the revenue for development. Mm. We've started a conversation around this, but how ready uh, are we as a people for such a system? Well, it's gradual. I think currently the policies and the laws of the country support it. But what we need to do is operationalization and implementation of the existing policies and the laws. Development is gradual. So once we continue to roll it out, once we continue to prepare the ground, once we continue to sensitize people about the need to get strategic leaders, the need to get assemblies to step up their revenue mobilization drive, the need to use money into areas of development, gradually we will get there. It is a matter of time. I, I was hoping you were going to touch on people's interest to pay the various levies that would be uh, slapped at them uh, when these MMDCEs are weaned off uh, the, the usual funds they get yes, from my sister, main government. I, I agree with you. You see, people's interest to pay the taxes would come up when they are sure that the taxes they are paying goes into development, which they can see. So to start with, let us put them, let us, let us link revenue collection to development or service delivery. So that if the average person sees that environmental sanitation has improved, the average person sees that security has improved, the average person sees that market has been developed, this person will run to come in and pay the taxes. But where they are not able to connect revenue mobilization to service delivery, it is disincentive to pay. So again, under the IGF policy to be developed, Sensitization will be done, awareness raising will be done for people to step up and then pay their respective taxes. However, if they pay their taxes, they shouldn't go and sit back. They should monitor how local government uses these taxes to promote service delivery. Is it not only ideal to, to think that people will want to pay taxes when they see uh, real use of, of the tax? Uh, people have, are complaining of very hard times now. Yes, they are. They are complaining of hard, hard times. But my sister, without taxes, no local government can survive. Though, so, you see, they can't, no local government can survive. And that is the more reason why every single city is important. So once you part with the money, you don't sit back. Monitor through, follow through, and check what your local government are using your money for. Because if you don't pay the tax too, it is a criminal offense.
what you are supposed to pay. But once you pay, you also monitor and then make sure that the taxes are used for the intended purpose. And, and, and then once you pay in monitoring, uh, how, do, how, how does that resident in that particular district do that? Very good. The, every district assembly prepares what we call a composite budget. The composite budget gives you a fair idea of the plans and programs and the areas of expenditure of the assembly. This composite budget is on the Ministry of Finance website. So you go there and then you download a copy of the composite budget. If you don't have it, you walk to the district assembly. We have a unit there, client service unit. They will give you a copy. Occasionally and every quarterly, the district assembly is expected to prepare each financial statement and trial balances. These documents are made available to the assembly members. It is expected that after every assembly meeting, the assembly member is expected to meet his or her people in the electoral area and give them feedback. Where you live in a community and you're not getting this feedback from your assembly member, you can walk straight and make a complaint. We have a unit we call Public Relations and Complaints Unit. You make a complaint and the assembly will make sure that every information you need to enable you to monitor them will be given to you. Thank you very much, Eric. Eric Odrosai is Dean of Studies at the Institute of Local government studies. Now the term a heavy industrial area is fast losing or uh, well we'll move away from the Tema story we'll look at uh, something else that has to do with us and the National Film and Television Institute and Multi TV a subsidiary of the multimedia group have signed a collaborative agreement to enable NAFTI premier and student productions fortnightly on Senior Freak, a weekly television magazine program at a ceremony held to officially sign the agreement. Director of NAFTI, Professor Linus Abraham, noted that a partnership with Multi TV is timely and a mutually beneficial enterprise. Right, let's move on to uh, something that has to do with the Tema Heavy Industrial Area, an area that is fast losing its appeal as Ghana's foremost industrial hub. The area has become a danger zone, housing refuse and other combustible materials. It has also become a parking lot for tankers which convey petroleum products whose drivers park haphazardly in the area. A heavy industrial area, apart from the many activities, has also become a parking lot for tankers which convey petroleum products and whose drivers park haphazardly in the area. An industrial area, as the name suggests, is structured to cater for industrial activities and development. Such areas are usually far from residential properties to help check the environmental and social impact they are likely to have on residents. But the Tema Heavy Industrial Area, considered as a major industrial hub in Ghana, is fast losing its industrial attractiveness. Close to the 5.6 kilometer pipelines belonging to the Tema oil refinery is this huge pile of refuse. The dump site is close to the cocoa processing company and has grown over the years to its current size because it now serves not only the companies here but residents from adjoining communities. The indiscriminate burning of refuse close to the tall pipelines has been blamed for the recent explosion which claimed one life. The people from site 7 come to 1, site 10, and the mechanics are around. They, they bring the trash from there to come and dump it. And every day there's fire in it. Nobody cares about it. You go to where the boiler is. There's, there's water on the surface of the boiler where the palm trees are. So when the load leaked into the water and the fire started, it, it just shoots. So the fire started from where the boiler is. The fire at Stor has cost the company huge sums of money. Well, as at our last assessment, you know, um, what had gushed out of the pipeline, we put it in the region of 280,000 US dollars because we lost um, a total of uh, 300 metric tons of naphtha. Apart from this alarming danger is the indiscriminate parking of fuel tankers in the area. The practice has become widespread due to the lack of parking space for these tanker drivers. 
Concerns have been raised over the looming disaster the activities in the area, including the huge pile of refuse. Drivers unaware of the looming disaster parked directly under high tension poles. The situation poses a serious threat to lives and properties, as three fire outbreaks have already been recorded in the area. Squatters also keep encroaching on the land on a daily basis, a development which is fueling the rate of illegal activities in the area. Although these signs are clearly written on the wall, security does not seem to be a top priority here. Probably, it is time authorities take precautionary measures and clamp down on the illegal activities here to forestall preventable disasters. Matilda Pamaga for Joy News, Tema. Time now for business here on News Today. And the Ministry of Transport is expected to soon name a transaction advisor on the establishment of a new national airline. The airline will be run on a public-private partnership basis and the transaction advisor is expected to advise government on the ownership structure, funding, business model and routes among others. The ministry is currently in the final stages of selecting the winning bid from six transaction advisors that were shortlisted. Government has been keen on creating a new national carrier to tap into the growing aviation industry in Ghana. The interest also stems from the desire to create jobs as the aviation industry remains largely labor intensive. Ghana International Airlines, the last national carrier that was 70% owned by government, ceased operations in May 2010 amid financial challenges and a shareholder dispute. Ghana's aviation industry has been growing at an annual rate of 10% in the past decade. International passenger to out uh, throughout for the 28 airlines flying to Accra hit 1 million last year. Hi, yeah, it's a, pl it's a pleasure to be on. Mm. Tell us what has changed since we last spoke. So, Simon, are you there? Sorry. Are you, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you? Right. So you're at the here. election center. T tell us what's changed since we last spoke. Well, actually, nothing very much is, is going on. Um, basically, everyone here in the results center has had a very nice filling lunch, and we are still waiting for the first of the results to trickle in. I am told that the very first result to come in, and this is by tradition and has been tradition ever since um, the beginning of multi-party democracy in South Africa, the first result to come in will be from the Robben Island district. Of course, Robben Island was uh, the political prison where the um, ANC leadership was kept for many years. Nelson Mandela spent 27 years there. So it's a very symbolic moment that um, Robben Island should be the first vote counted in South Africa's democratic elections. Uh, when, when do we expect voting to end today? Voting, uh, voting stations close at 9 o'clock local time, which I believe is 7 o'clock uh, in Ghana. However, because a few of the polling stations opened a little bit late today, um, some of these will, the hours will be extended. The IEC has also said, look, we are not in the business of um, preventing anyone from voting. If there are queues that are formed by 9 o'clock, if you're in the queue by 9 o'clock, they are probably going to make a plan to let you vote because they, they really don't want to leave anyone out in the cold. Mm. Here in Ghana, the only time we had to vote uh, twice uh, for a particular vote is where we had our 2012 elections. We voted two consecutive days. And, and for you, you vote until when? Until 9 p.m. today. So it, it, the election will only be one day. It, it will definitely not go into tomorrow. But when are we expecting the results, though? Results? I mean, by the end of tomorrow, we should have a pretty good idea of what's going on. But the final results with 100% of voting stations um, counted, probably only by Friday evening, we're hoping, or possibly even sometime on Saturday. Technically, the, the Electoral Commission has an entire week in which to prepare the votes, but they are confident they will be counted uh, a long time before that. All right. Thank you very much, Simon. Simon, Mav Simon thank Allison. Thank is with uh, the Daily Maverick, he's Africa's correspondent uh, with them. Uh, you're watching News Today, I'll be right back.